Type 25 made its comeback. How about the AK-117? Both the PPSH and Kilo 141 are finally available to everyone, but how do they actually match up against the current meta? Today we're gonna look at the top 10 best guns to use in Season 1, recommended by Team Cygnus. We're going over each gun's strengths, recommended builds, my personal builds, and the loadouts I use when playing with these guns. On the number 10 spot, we have the PKM, an LMG that performs like an actual LMG. If you're looking to play passive, and I mean truly passive, this is the gun to use. Similar to the RPD, you can hold a lot of bullets and it has one of the easiest recoil patterns in the game. The downside is, it has a slower mobility so you'll have to play almost like a sentry gun if you're planning to use this weapon. Hold angles, wall bang enemies, and camp. That's what the PKM is for. Here's the recommended build for this LMG, and here's the loadout I use. Moving on to number 9, Elo 141 is a pretty good gun but is held back due to its recoil pattern. If you're looking to play range while still being able to move around, this is a viable option in the current meta. Pretty clean iron sights, lots of builds to choose from, but be careful taking fights at close range because you're putting yourself at a disadvantage compared to the guns that are higher up in this list. Play it smart and use it around mid to long range and you'll do well with this gun. Here's the recommended build for the Kilo 141, although I prefer to use this build that's a bit more aggressive and of course I put a red dot on it. This is my full loadout. Due to the MX-9 nerf, Fennec found its way back into the meta, well kinda, and is taking the number 8 spot. There's a reason why pro players in the Eastern World Champs used this as their SMGs to rush before the Type 25 got buffed. You can use this to play aggressively and run around the map to clear out tight areas. Its fast fire rate combined with its very good hip fire gives you the ability to win gunfights without ADSing in close quarters. This really works well on maps that have a lot of small areas where gunfights occur, so try it out on maps like Summit, Standoff, and Nuketown. You may use this recommended build, or you can use my personal build. Either way, you're gonna do great with this gun as long as you use it for its intended use. Remember Holger 26? It still holds up as one of the best guns to use in the game at number 7. If you think of LMGs, you think of a low mobility, high accuracy weapon. But its no stock attachment changes all of that. With no stock equipped, you get a 40% ADS movement buff that's comparable to AR strafing all the while having a 100 mag, very good wall bank penetration, and flinch stability. To top it off, it has a fast fire rate and a competitive time to kill, cementing its spot in this top 10 list. Are you still using this LMG or not? Nah? Let me know in the comments. Here's the recommended build for the Holger 26 and my personal build features a red dot of course. Personally, I don't use this as much because having 100 bullets seems like playing the game with unlimited ammo. Next up, taking the number 6 spot, one of my favorite weapons to use right now, M13. If you're like me who leans toward a passive playstyle more often than not, it makes sense to run a high fire rate weapon with an easy to control recoil while being able to compete at range and attachments to make it better. Its first few shots are very accurate so you can use this to challenge most guns at range. You can also use this gun to challenge head glitches if you have to because of the low recoil and high headshot multiplier. However, you might feel that your shots won't connect in longer ranges because of the bullet velocity at range, which makes your time to kill slower if we take fights farther away. Here's the recommended build for the 40 mag, and here's my red dot build that I use together with this full loadout most of the time. Next up, the top 5 weapons. These weapons are the best of the best that you can use right now, that if you decide to use only these guns and nothing else, you'll be set for the rest of the ranked season. One of the newer additions, BPSH, cracks into the top 5 spot in this list. It's a good gun on paper but the horizontal recoil that comes with the initial spray makes it harder for the average player to connect their first few shots so you'll have to practice it if you ever want to main this gun. Although its BSA is questionable, attachments are available to stack and play range. With the 35 round fast reload, you can use this gun to play aggressively as mentioned in a previous BPSH video you can find on this channel. Here's the recommended range build. And here's the build I personally use together with my loadout. If the Outlaw, Arctic, and Locust had a baby, if that's even possible, you'd get the top 4 gun in this list, SVD. Even though it has a fire rate of a semi-auto rifle, it's better used for sniping in the 40 meter range, having the same hitbox as the Locust. 
If you don't manage to get a kill with one shot, you can spam it with the infinite two shot range it has. Accuracy is still important as it has a slower fire rate than say the SKS. If you're playing SND, BLQ is still a good choice, but to be honest nowadays I'd rather have fun and play respawns even if I lose matches against persistence users. Here's the recommended build, and believe it or not, I also use the exact same build for the SVD and it's up to which optic to run. Here's my full loadout for the SVD. On the number 3 spot, we got the SKS. It's the best semi-auto weapon in the game, having an initial range of 40 meters where you can easily kill with 2 shots if you manage to hit 1 shot to the upper body. Not only that, it has unlimited 1 shot kill potential if you hit the head, so you can get those lucky shots if you aim high enough. Its fire rate is faster than the M67 conversion of the AMAX and is susceptible to flinching, so you need to equip attachments or the toughness perk to account for that. I love this weapon for sitting back and holding lanes and angles around the map. You can use the recommended build or the build I use that I got from space along with this loadout. About the number 2 spot, I'll be completely honest. I never used this gun until I had to record gameplay for this video, all because when it came out first, it wasn't that good, and when it got buffed, I didn't have it unlocked, and I was enjoying the M13 so much that I never bothered using it until today. CBR4 is an all-around SMG that you can use to play with versatility. Its 50 mag and better potential time to kill around 17 meters is another thing that puts it over the Type 25, but most people will prefer the easier recoil, so they end up using the Type 25 instead. One more thing that separates this among the other SMGs is its wallbang penetration, that if paired with FMJ, you will get wallbang damage of over 80%. Here's the recommended build that I used to play with as well, along with the full loadout. You already know about the number one gun in the game, it's the Type 25. Very easy to use, easy to beam, fast fire rate, potential time to kill of 210 milliseconds in close range, what more can I say? The only downside I can think of is the iron sights, so if you've got the cash to get a weapon blueprint for a better iron sight, I'd say go for it and knock yourself out. Here's the recommended build and here's the build I use along with the loadout. As you can see, I never use persistence as nowadays I'm completely fine with losing solo rank matches as long as I'm still learning to play the game right. That's the top 10 guns in Cold Mobile for this season. Special thanks to Team Cygnus for providing the analysis and the recommended builds mentioned on today's video. If you want to see more stats, builds, and analysis, check out the link on the pinned comment down in the description. But that's it for today's video. I'm really excited for February because we are working hard to bring you better content. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can do so by joining as a member of the channel with special perks depending on the tier you choose to subscribe to. This will allow us to focus more on the writing, editing, and the occasional memes that equate to better videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.